The French people may be upset until they taste this and then <laughs> there's no going back. Why do I get two of these and you have zero? It's honestly unfair. The world is cruel. Welcome to Lazy Susan Fusion, the show that combines classic cuisines with iconic dishes to create an all new fusion recipe. I'm your host, Trig Ferrano, and for today's episode, the all new fusion dish will be French arancini. If you don't know what arancini are, then I have fantastic news. Today is the best day of your life. You have just discovered one of the best kept secrets in all of Italian food. Arancini are deep fried risotto balls that are stuffed with a sweet or savory filling. The most classic arancino is stuffed with ragu and peas, but every restaurant has their own spin. In today's episode, my spin on arancini is going to be making French arancini out of the ultimate French dish, the Eiffel Tower of French cuisine. I'm gonna be making arancini out of beef bourguignon. Beef bourguignon is a braised beef dish that cooks for hours to develop a deep, robust flavor. The version I'm gonna make actually cooks for two days, but trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Just follow the science. The longer something takes, the better it tastes. Beef bourguignon is traditionally served on a bed of mashed potatoes with garnishes of carrots, onions, bacon, and mushrooms. For the French arancino, I'm gonna turn everything inside out and put potatoes on the outside with the beef bourguignon on the inside. This is gonna be good, but it's gonna take two days to cook, so we should get started. For this recipe, you want a tough cut of meat that can hold up to hours of braising. The classic cut would be chuck, shoulder, but to explore other options, I also grabbed some shank, shin, and brisket, chest. I removed some, not all of the fat, cut everything into fist side slabs, and oiled and salted it for braising. So what is braising? It's five simple steps. Season and sear the meat, cook the aromatics, deglaze with wine or stock, cover and simmer gently, and then let it rest. You can sear your meat on the stovetop in batches, but I prefer to dry sear it in the oven at 500F, 200C for 20 minutes. This is gonna be less smoky, less hands-on, and faster because you can sear all the meat at once and get started cooking Step two, your aromatics. You can and should cook your aromatics, or vegetables in this case, in the pot you're gonna eventually use for the beef bourguignon. Your aromatics are garlic, onions, carrots, and celery. I roughly chopped everything and then added it to a couple tablespoons of butter, peels, skins, and all. You want it roughly chopped in large pieces because it's gonna cook for a while and you don't want everything to completely disintegrate into the sauce. Speaking of sauce, this sauce starts by deglazing, step three, the pot with a bottle of wine. Well almost a full bottle of wine. Okay, as much of the wine as you're willing to part with. The traditional wine for this recipe is a Pinot Noir from the Burgundy region of France, hence the name Beef Bourguignon. Today, I'm using a Pinot Noir from the Languedoc-Roussillon region of France. Not Burgundy, but still Pinot Noir and still French. After the alcohol cooks off and the wine reduces for about 15 to 20 minutes, I threw in the bones from our beef shank, shin, a quart of beef stock, two bay leaves, a couple stems of thyme, and two tablespoons of tomato paste. To keep our oh-so-tender beef separated from the overly mushy veggies, leaves, stems, and garlic peels, I put the meat in a soup sock. Alternatively, you can use a cheesecloth, otherwise you're gonna have to separate these mushy bits later, and I wanted to save my future self some time. Once everything is in the pot, top it off with more beef stock, get everything boiling together, and then put it in the oven to stew at 300F, 150C for two hours. Then remove the lid and put it back in the oven for another hour. After three hours of cooking, this thing is pretty darn close to being finished, but we're gonna leave this thing in the fridge overnight to develop a deeper, even more luxurious flavor. And as the beef gets tucked in for the night, I'm gonna read a quick bedtime story about the history of arancini. Over a thousand years ago, the island of Sicily was ruled by the Arabian Empire and was known as the Emirate of Sicily. Everyone would go about their day as normal, working, chatting, and eating kebay, a popular Levantine snack of spiced flour stuffed with minced meat. Then, one day, instead of using flour and Arab spices, one unknown Sicilian hero made a kebay out of cold risotto stuffed with Italian ragu. He decided to give this kebay a new name. His creation resembled an orange, or arancia, in Italian, and so he called this new snack the Arancino, and the whole world lived happily ever after. Bonne nuit, mon petit boeuf bourguignon. While our beef was sleeping, a layer of rendered fat solidified on the top, so I'm gonna scrape off a good amount of that and then bring the whole thing back up to a boil. While that heats up, I'm gonna make the mashed potatoes. Peel, chop, and boil 10 Yukon Golds for 20 minutes. Mash them up with four tablespoons of butter, one egg yolk, save the white for later and salt and pepper to taste. Remember to actually taste it. If you don't like it, add salt and pepper till you do like it. After your potatoes are done, spread them thin and put them in the fridge to cool. Back to the beef. 
After 45 minutes of re-simmering, pull out the beef that we conveniently cooked in a soup sock, thanks past self, and strain the rest through a mesh strainer. This will go back on the stove with our beef to reduce into our final sauce. To help things thicken up, I added four packets of gelatin to two cups of beef stock. Don't worry, this won't make beef jello. It's just meant to replace the gelatin you would otherwise get if you added bones or a natural beef gelatin. That's if this was a Michelin star restaurant. While that simmers on the back burner, let's prepare our garnishes. First up, bacon. I started the bacon in a shallow layer of water so that the bacon doesn't crisp up too much. Once the water evaporates and the bacon starts to crisp, I pulled it out, added the tab of butter, and then threw in the mushrooms. These vegetables and mushrooms would normally be cut larger so that they can cook with the beef as the sauce reduces around them, but I cut them smaller and cooked them separately so that they can fit inside of the arancino. You've probably noticed I've been saying arancini and arancino kind of interchangeably. That's because arancini is the plural and arancino is the singular. This is the case with a lot of Italian words like panini, panino, cannoli, cannolo, ravioli, raviolo, or spaghetti, spaghetto. After cooking the mushrooms for about five minutes, I added the onions and cooked the two together, adding some sauce whenever things started to get too dry. After the beef finished its 45 minute simmer, I pulled it out and shredded it with my hands. Oh, what? No, bad idea. I shredded it with forks and added the carrots to the sauce so that they could simmer on their own. The carrots are more durable than the onions and mushrooms, so they can just sit in the sauce and do their own thing for a while. Once your carrots are done, combine everything in the pan with the onions and mushrooms. Well, actually use a pot. That was a big mistake. Pour in some of the sauce to lightly coat the filling and leave the rest to simmer on the back burner and keep reducing into the most amazing, luxurious, and thick beef glaze that you've ever tasted. To construct the arancini, there are two techniques. Arancini 101 is to make a tiny potato bowl, fill that up, and then make a potato lid to cover up the bowl. Advanced arancini is to make a potato plate, add the filling on top, and then slowly curl the plate up over the top until the ends meet and create a seal. Regardless of your technique, try to keep the outer layer free of cracks and as round and even as possible. Put your beautiful arancini in the freezer for 10 minutes to firm up and prep your coating. Flour, an egg, and you can add that egg white from earlier, remember? And breadcrumbs. It probably doesn't matter, but this is Lazy Susan Fusion, so for the French arancini, we're gonna use a baguette for our breadcrumbs. Chopped, blended, toasted at 300F-150C for 15 minutes, and blended again. After 10 minutes in the freezer, our arancini are ready to journey through the dredge and jump into some 350F-175C oil to cook for about two minutes. While you fry up arancini one by one, the sauce on the back burner should have reduced to a thick glaze. When it gets below an inch or so in your large pot, move it into a smaller pot so that it can reduce without burning. Hey, between you and me, if you want to level up your cooking as easily as possible, just put your sauce on the bottom. Sauce on top, peasant food. Sauce on bottom, Michelin star. Garnish with thyme and parsley, and don't forget to use golden tweezers if you have them for the ultimate French chef experience. Et voila, I've officially offended two of the most popular cuisines in the world with one dish, the arancino a la bouffe bourguignon.